Hey there, it's Kenny. In this video, we'll be diving into the fascinating topic of the Tang Sung transformation theory. Join me on an exploration of the political, economic, and social changes during the transition from the Tang Dynasty to the Sung Dynasty. We'll uncover the reasons behind this transformation and the impact it had on different aspects. Get ready for an exciting journey through Chinese history. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more captivating content. Let's get started. The Tang Sung transformation theory was initially proposed by the Japanese scholar Nato Konin in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. According to this theory, the transition from the Tang Dynasty to the Sung Dynasty marked China's shift from the Middle Ages to the early modern period. Over the past century, scholars from various East Asian countries have extensively studied and discussed this theory, leading to a general consensus on the significant leap in the historical process between the Tang and Sung dynasties. So, what exactly does this theory suggest? It argues that the period of the late Tang dynasty and the five dynasties marked a typical transitional phase from the medieval era to the early modern period. The transition from Tang to Sung witnessed significant changes in politics, society, and the economy. And boy, oh boy, did things change. The Sung dynasty brought about a whole new era, unveiling numerous historical phenomena that are characteristic of the early modern period. From political reforms to social transformations and economic advancements, the Sung dynasty set the stage for what we now consider the beginning of the early modern period. Now, let's take a closer look at some of the key changes that occurred during this transformation. According to the scholar Nato Conan, the Tang Sung transformation, or the shift from the medieval to the early modern era, can be understood by looking at the decline of aristocratic politics and the rise of autocracy. Now, hold on to your hats, because this shift from aristocratic politics to monarchic autocracy is a common phenomenon in world history. It's like a universal trend that keeps popping up everywhere. During the Tang Sung period in China, the decline of the aristocracy resulted in a closer relationship between the monarch and the people. It was no longer about hereditary privileges when it came to holding high positions. Nope. The emperor had the power to decide and appoint anyone for those important roles. Talk about a power move. In the medieval era, though the monarch represented the aristocracy, in the early modern period, the monarch was no longer the private property of the aristocratic group. They directly faced the subjects and became public figures. It was like a whole new ball game. But wait, there's more. Not only did the position of the monarch change, but the status of the people also underwent a significant transformation. In the early modern period, the people's status and their rights to property were drastically different from the aristocratic politics era. Back in the day, the people were pretty much seen as slaves in the eyes of the aristocrats. But guess what? Starting from the Sui and Tang dynasties, the people were emancipated from the clutches of the aristocrats aristocracy. It was like breaking free from the chains of the past. Now, I am going to talk about the Tang Sung transformation and explore the changes that occurred in the realm of economics. Let's start with the Tang Dynasty. Back in the day, the people were directly under the control of the state, but most of them were basically tenant farmers of the aristocracy. It wasn't until the mid-Tang period that they gradually started to break free from those chains. It's like they were finally spreading their wings and soaring to new heights. Fast forward to the Sung Dynasty, and we witness a remarkable shift in the status of the common people. They rose up the ranks and became directly under the control of the state. It was like a direct line of communication with the monarch, with no meddling from those pesky aristocrats in between. Finally, a chance to have their voices heard. Now, let's talk about land. In the Tang Dynasty, land was owned by the state and distributed to the people. It was like a big land sharing party. But when the Sung Dynasty rolled around, the land belonged to the people and they had the freedom to dispose of it as they pleased. However, there was a catch. Land consolidation became the new norm. It was like a game of monopoly, where everyone wanted to own as much land as possible. Who needs boardwalk when you can have the whole town? 
Am I right? And here's where things get really interesting. The Tang Dynasty was all about prioritizing agriculture and keeping a tight leash on commerce. But the Sun Dynasty, oh boy, they took it to a whole new level. They were like the ultimate multitaskers, balancing both agriculture and commerce. The economy became a whirlwind of goods and money, reaching unprecedented levels of development. Products, land, and even cities became commercialized. The bustling markets of the Tang Dynasty were replaced by the vibrant grass markets and night markets of the Sun dynasty, you could practically feel the energy of the commercial revolution. And let's not forget about transportation. The Sung dynasty took it up a notch. Their waterway transportation system was on another level compared to the Tang dynasty. They were like the kings and queens of the rivers and canals, making trade and travel so much easier. It was like upgrading from a horse-drawn carriage to a high-speed train. The Tang dynasty marked the end of the barter system, where goods were exchanged directly. But the Sung dynasty, oh no, they embraced the era of a money driven economy. It was like entering a whole new world of transactions. Coins and bills became the stars of the show, replacing the old ways of swapping goods. It was like a financial revolution. And let's not forget the household registration system. In the Tang Dynasty, your status in the household registry was determined by your wealth and social standing. But in the Sung Dynasty, they introduced a dual registration system for urban and rural residents. This further elevated the status of commoners. It was like a VIP pass to recognition and respect. Now, let's talk about the Tang Sung transformation and the changes that took place in the realm of culture. Let's start with poetry because who doesn't love a good rhyme? When we compare the daily recitations of Tang poems and Sung lyrics, we can clearly feel the difference between them. Sung lyrics were all about being open and free-spirited, reflecting the scholarly atmosphere of the Sung dynasty. On the other hand, Tang poetry was grand and majestic, more of an aristocratic affair. It was like comparing a royal procession to a wild dance party. The Sung dynasty's literary works were all about embracing freedom and expressing oneself, catering to the common folk. It was like a cultural revolution, one poem at a time. Now, let's talk about visual art because, hey, a picture is worth a thousand words, right? In the Tang Dynasty, there was a strong influence from the preceding northern and southern dynasties, and it showed in their magnificent wall paintings. They were like dazzling works of art, just like the cave art from the northern and southern dynasties. The paintings often depicted grand scenes and majestic landscapes, with a focus on noble themes. It was like stepping into a gallery fit for kings and queens. On the other hand, the Sung Dynasty had a preference for hand scrolls, screens, and ink paintings. The paintings leaned towards simplicity and elegance, leaving room for imagination. They were like delicate brushstrokes on a canvas, capturing the essence of the sung literati. It was like sipping a cup of tea while appreciating the beauty of nature. And let's not forget about music because it's the soundtrack to our cultural journey. In the Tang Dynasty, music played a significant role in serving the ceremonial needs of the aristocracy. It was like a symphony of grandeur, filling the air with majestic tunes, but when the Sun Dynasty came around, music took a turn towards the taste of the common people. Those powerful and delicate sung lyrics could be sung and enjoyed by all. It was like a catchy pop song that everyone could jam to. The cultural shift was real, my friends. Some scholars even compare this cultural transformation to the Renaissance of the West. It was like a rebirth of artistic expression, bringing forth new ideas and embracing the freedom to create. Just like how the Renaissance breathed new life into European culture, the Tang Sung transformation revitalized Chinese culture in its own unique way. So, why the Tang Sung transformation happened? Actually, I believe that the Tang Sung transformation was indeed influenced by the An Lok Shan Rebellion. So, picture this, China, 8th century. The Tang Dynasty was in its heyday, enjoying a glorious era of prosperity. But then, chaos struck in the form of the An Lok Shan Rebellion. It was like a plot twist in an epic movie. This rebellion was led by regional military commanders who turned against the Tang Dynasty, bringing an end to its golden age. The rebellion unleashed over a century of turmoil, with the rise of warlord factions and the devastation of the central economy. It was like a roller coaster ride of uncertainty and upheaval. Now, let's talk politics. The An Lok Shan rebellion forced subsequent emperors to prioritize centralized power 
and the authority of the monarchy. It was like a wake-up call to strengthen the core and prevent any future rebellions. This shift in political dynamics marked a significant turning point in the Tang Sung transformation. It was like a new chapter in the history books with a focus on centralized governance and a strong monarchy. But wait, there's more. Let's dive into the realm of economics. The An Lok Shan Rebellion wreaked havoc on the economy of the Central Plains, leaving it in shambles. In response, the Tang government implemented new tax systems and placed a greater emphasis on developing the economy in the southern regions, particularly in Jiangnan. They even ventured into overseas trade, expanding their economic horizons. It was like a strategic move to rebuild and revitalize the economy. And guess what? This laid the foundation for the economic transformation we witnessed in the Sung Dynasty. In the Sung Dynasty, the people gained land ownership rights and witnessed the rise of a thriving trade-based economy. It was like a phoenix rising from the ashes of the An Lok Shan Rebellion. The people were empowered with the ownership of land, and a vibrant market economy emerged. It was like a breath of fresh air for the common folks, leading to a flourishing economic transformation. Thanks for tuning into my video on the Tang Sung Transformation Theory. If you found it interesting, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking the video. Your support is what keeps me going and inspires me to create more content. I'm always open to suggestions, so let me know in the comments what other topics you'd like me to cover. Stay curious and join me on this exciting journey through Chinese history, culture, and the wonders of ancient artifacts. Thank you for your support, and I'll see you soon.